All right, folks, we are back for the next section, section 1.3 for our pre-calculus class. So we're going to be focusing our attention on just lines today. So we're looking at linear equations in two variables. So we have our standard form ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b not both zero. So they, we don't want them zero at the same time, because otherwise we have nonsense. And in this case, we'll have a linear equation in two variables. And as I said, this would be our standard form. We're going to see other forms later on, which are going to be a little bit better for us, though. So throughout this section, we will analyze various components and other forms for the equation of a line. In general, the graph of a line, a linear equation in two variables, forms a line. Ooh. So the first aspect of lines we'd like to know some information about is the slope. So the slope of a non-vertical line is the number of units a line rises or falls vertically for each unit of horizontal change from left to right. So again, we want to make sure we're going a specific direction when we analyze slopes, because if we go in opposite direction, then that of course will change the value of our slope. So we want to go in a specific direction from left to right across the page when we're looking at the slope of a line. So our formula, uh, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 for our two given sets of points. And again, we don't want x1 to equal x2 because otherwise we'll have a zero on the bottom and we don't like to divide by zero, do we? So let's quickly do a couple of slope problems here. And again, it doesn't matter which one we call x1, x2, y1, y2, um, <clears throat> as long as you're just consistent and going from one point to the next and back. So if we want to say this is our x2 and y2, we can use our y2, which is a negative 6, minus 2, all over 1, minus a negative 3. So if we do the math, negative 8 over 4, which equals negative 2. Very quick. Fractions, everybody loves fractions, but we could still apply the same math. So y2 is 1 6 minus a negative 2 thirds all over negative 3 quarters minus 1 half. Oh boy, so we're going to text our brains a little bit here. So 2 thirds is the same as 4 6. So 1, 6, and 4, 6 looks like it would be 5, 6. And negative 3 quarters minus 2 quarters. So that's going to be a negative 5 quarters. So now we can divide those out. So we can do our same switch flip. And that's going to be a negative 4, 6, or a negative 2 thirds. So we have the slope of that line, the slope between those two points. All right, now, as far as sketching, now you'll see I have a little bit of a, a notation here. This is something for a future change, but don't worry about it. We're going to use the negative 5 halves. So we have four lines that they want you to draw. They want you to draw all of them through the point 2, 3, which we know is in the first quadrant. And then we have various slopes that we want to draw through that point. So 2, 3, let's put that in the right spot. And now a slope of 0. So again, the slope of 0 means it's not rising or falling as you go from left to right at all. So that means it's a constant horizontal line. So we can draw that in pretty quick. So there's our m equals 0. Slope of 1, so over 1, up 1. And so we can get a couple of points in here just to kind of guide us a little bit. So something like that. So there's m equal to 1. A negative 3. Now, another way that we can think of this 
is that this is a negative 3 over 1. So that means we're going to be going down 3 units for every 1 unit to the right. So, so down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. And so once you get some points, then you can draw your line. And so there's m equal to negative 3. And then our last one, which is the negative 5 halves. So we want a negative 5 over 2. So now we're dropping 5 units for every 2 units to the right. So... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 2. So you can kind of see why I wanted to change it. <laughs> it doesn't really fit well on this graph, but we could draw it. So if we wanted to go, oops, no, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I did it, do it right. So somewhere over here. Now, so I'm right in the way, so you can't see it very well, but let me move out of the way. There we go. <laughs> That's what I wrote. So m equals negative 5 halves. So, but we have the idea. So use this as your rise over run. That's another way to think of it. Rise or fall <laughs> over your run. So, all right. So that is some um, slope drawing. And so now we can start to put this all together into the equation. Now, again, you see I got more space. So obviously it might be a little cramped for space when you do these problems, but we'll do our best. So by rearranging the slope formula with slope m for a specific point x1, y1, and a general point x, y, we attain the following form for the equation of the line. So this is the point slope form. So we have to have a point that's given to us, and we have to have a slope that's given to us. And then we can substitute them in to get our equation. So this one, we're given a point, and we're given the slope, so we're good to go. X and Y we don't know, but X1 and Y1 we will know. So there should be our equation. Now, obviously, we like to pretty that up a little bit. Anytime you got double negatives, definitely get rid of those. Now, we could simplify this down more and solve it for a specific variable. Usually, y is what we like to do, but we'll save that for the next um, application. So that, in and of itself, is the answer. Now, what about something like this one, though? If they say, okay, we want you to find the equation of the line, but it has to pass through this point and this point. So what would you do? They're not giving you a slope, but you can find one. So we can substitute our numbers in. Just be careful which ones you put in the right spots. So if this is our x2, y2, 5 goes first, the minus 1 was interval second. And then we'll have a negative 5 minus 5. So this looks like 6 over negative 10, which we can reduce to a negative 3 fifths. So we have a fractional slope, which is fine. Fractions are okay. And now we can plug everything in. So y minus. Now, which point do we want to use? Does it matter? It should pass through both of them, so it really doesn't matter which point we pick. As long as we're using this slope and either one of these points, we should get the same line. And you can always check that if you wanted to. I'm going to use the first one. So we used our y1 and our x1. And so now we just got to simplify it a little bit. So y plus 1. 
and we really can't do much simplifying on the other side. I mean, if we wanted to distribute it, we could, but I'm actually going to save that. for a different problem. So that would be the slope, point slope form. Is it good? Yeah, it's not bad, it gives us the equation, but can we get something better and more useful? You betcha. So let's take a look at the next way we can write equations of lines. Let me center this back up again. So by simplifying the point slope form, to utilize the line's y-intercept, let's say zero comma b, then we get the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. So the slope-intercept form is much more compact. Y equals mx plus b. So hopefully that rings a bell for you. m will be the slope, and 0b is the y-intercept. So now, if you have something like an equation in standard form, and you wanted to put it in slope-intercept form, you could get the slope and y-intercept directly from that. So let's see how to do that. So we have our standard form. We have to get y by itself. We want it to look something like this. So we got to start moving stuff around. Now, if we subtract 3x from both sides, that's going to give you a negative 5x equals a negative 3x plus 10. Okay, we still got this negative 5 to get rid of. So we can divide both sides by negative 5, but be careful. The negatives are going to cancel out over here, so you will have a positive y. Now, this negative 5 is going to get put underneath both of these, remember. So on the one case, it will cancel out, so you'll have a positive 3 fifths x. But on the other case, you got one positive, one negative, so that's going to mean you have a negative answer. And 10 over 5 reduces to 2. So there should be your equation in slope-intercept form. And now from this, we can quickly pull out the slope and y-intercept. So the slope is always in front of x. And the y-intercept looks like a negative 2 is the main part of it, but don't forget it's a point. You have to write it as an ordered pair. So 0, negative 2 is the y-intercept. Now, for something like this, which looks like our point-slope form, again, it, it's an equation, but it's clunky. It's not very useful in the format it's in, so let's put it in our slope-intercept form to try to get something nicer. So the first thing, we got a double negative. Let's change that to a plus. And now we're going to distribute. So if we multiply a half times x, we get a half x. A half times 3 better be 3 halves. So again, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. This is just 3 over 1. So we got 3 halves. Now the last thing is we got to get this 1 over to the other side. So let's subtract that over. So we got y equals 1 half x plus, so now 1 can be replaced with two halves. So three halves minus two halves better be one half. And there's our slope intercept form. And so now we can see our slope is going to be one half based off of the number in front of x. And then our y intercept should be zero snap, one half. All right, so we've been going for a little while here. So let's Stop the video here, and then we'll pick up the rest of it in the next video. See you soon.